hello welcome back to my channel so it's another weekend it's another video and as i told you people this time i'm going to be consistent so anyways this video this review i was supposed to do it ages and ages ago when the movie first premiered in ghana then i heard that netflix acquired it and i was like yes it means i can watch it now however something very interesting happened when the movie was supposed to come out so when the movie was supposed to come out it didn't show up on Netflix Africa that like, well if you're in Africa you couldn't act you couldn't watch this movie and the movie I'm talking about is the burial of Kojo so the movie premiered on Netflix on 31st March right of this year that's 2019 but 31st March came and went and the movie wasn't on Netflix Africa and do you know what because maybe I thought it was me so as of this morning which is the last week of May that I'm filming this I went back on Netflix to check and there's still no the barrel of kojo however it's available in every other region but africa which tells me uh, quite a couple of things on the movie there's something about it not being available in africa that just makes me feel like ghana or africa isn't his target audience i might be wrong and feel free to call me out like, how dare you so the interesting thing about this movie is that when you know it's done the film festival circuit so everybody has like rave reviews if i tell you the number of reviews i've seen about this movie it is crazy like everybody's talking about how this is a masterpiece this is amazing this is classic this is you know and everything i won't go so far as to call it a classic yet who knows maybe in the five years time we might sit back watch this movie and be like yo this was the best thing to ever happen so anyways if you don't know the barrel of kojo is a movie by blitz the ambassador blitz the ambassador is an american based guy is a ghanian based american musician no he's an american based ghanian musician and this is his first foray into doing movies so this is his first feature right and the movie was crowdfunded that in itself was so great because imagine you do a movie and you're like okay you know what for post-production i need people to crowdfund it so I, you, he puts on gofundme people donate money and things and he had like executive producers like ava duvernay he had jesse williams so it was like you know it was such a big deal because for everybody that sees it like yo i want to see what this movie is about right so in every review for the movie right it says that it's afro magical realism i didn't see the movie yet and i was like hmm look i want to see how africa i want to see how afro magical realism translates on screen because i don't know maybe we've been watching it and we didn't know how to label it properly you know that's our thing maybe you've been eating something for so long you didn't know that's what the name was so i'm sure so in my head i thought that's what it was no problem seeing the reviews the reviews are like this is afro magical realism like I, I can't wait to watch this movie so now let me get into my gripes about the movie i guess the things i liked about the movie so when the movie you know when they're doing the press before the movie actually came out and when blitz was like trying to promote the movie he was like oh this is a movie within a movie and this movie tackles galamse and like he came to ghana he saw this newspaper article about galamse he was like wow why don't i incorporate it in this movie i'm doing it, it's a movie within a movie so in my head what I thought I was going to watch is not what I watched. So that really prejudiced me when the movie was going and I was like, wait, this isn't what I was expecting because you were like, there's a movie within a movie. So that's what I thought it was going to be. Like, as the movie's progressing, there'll be a break, reveal into another universe, do that movie. By the time we come back, everything makes sense. You're like, oh, yo, how didn't we think of this? But that's what happened. So it made me feel very dumb, like while I was watching it, because I felt like, wait, I thought this was a movie within a movie. And I was like, oh, do I watch a telenovela? And that telenovela informed that, oh, oh, okay, two plus two. Oh, okay, great. And he was like, it was about Galamse. And the focus of this thing wasn't even on Galamse. Galamse was like, like a plot derivative, right? It's like, we need something to drive the plot. Let's bring in Galam Galamse. That's how it felt like to me. This is my biggest gripe about the movie, language. How do you have a fancy mother, a fancy father, and the daughter speaks tree? And maybe for like most of the audiences, they wouldn't notice a difference, but for a Ghanaian, that's why I feel like once again, this wasn't made for a Ghanaian audience. Because if you're a Ghanaian and you hear the mother speaking tree, oh, wow, and it's a miracle hard, miracle hard, and the, and the mother is like, oh, and then you have this child speaking a santi tree and it just throws you off. 
and I won't lie that that anytime she spoke whilst her parents were spoke like were speaking just threw me off all the time because I was expecting to hear Fanti and so until I don't hear Fanti it takes me out until I don't hear Fanti it takes me out so that actually kind of ruined the experience for me because you know I thought it'd be all Fanti tale Allah I told you so but alas it wasn't the thing is that I think because it was like it was so much about you know trying to tell this very intricate tale of how two worlds delve you know they merge to form one thing so much thought wasn't given to like who the individual characters were and for me personally i'm a very character driven person the, the things i write the things i'm attracted to they are very character driven so if like there's a movie and the characters aren't as well developed or the characters it just feels some way for me so that's my thing about i think that's my two major things the language and like the um the characters the, i don't know I was, I was expecting more maybe too much so let me just say this the opening shot of the barrel of kojo actually sells the movie if you don't remember anything about the movie the opening shot of the car on the beach and the car on fire when you see it you're like damn that's hot one thing i liked about it was like the symbolism you know crows as a harbinger of death that was great like anytime you see a crow you're like something is about to happen the dove as you know doves are pure they are light um i liked how you know you you are just watching i like how you like you veer into like the magical realm you know the illusion the otherworldliness the dreaminess that you associate with the uh with a magical realm so that was great for me actually because i was like oh yeah oh, this place is upside down interesting a uh, take on this thing so that was it all in all i think the barrel of kojo was a great piece considering that it's his first movie you know it's not this is my thing it's not everybody that's going to have like a huge hit as your first movie because it's your first feature you're going to make mistakes i feel like this is a place where you you get to cut your teeth make the mistakes you have to make you know if people if people hate it people are mad about it make those mistakes so that when you're moving to do it like your next movie right you take all those criticisms all those things and then make the next one better once again, I really, really, really think that The Barrel of Kojo wasn't made for Ghanaian audiences. I think it was made for uh, the Western world or the people that are not quite familiar with our culture. So that when they see it, I mean, obviously, if you haven't seen, if you're not familiar with something, someone comes to introduce it to you, it feels like the greatest piece. It feels like, this is amazing. This is phenomenal. Why haven't we thought about it? That's how, that's a sensation I get, or that's a sense I get from the barrel of culture. That's a sense I get from all the press around it. And I know people loved it. Like people love, love, loved it. And I liked it. I didn't love it. I mean, it was the way I like it is the way the Game of Thrones season eight made me feel. Exactly. So anyways, let me know what you think about The Barrel of Kojo. Have you seen The Barrel of Kojo? Have you been able to watch it since it's not available on Netflix Africa? Did you go watch it at the premiere? I'm sure if you watch at the premiere, you had like a different feeling from me. So me right now, dear, what I'm doing, I'm just talking jazz. But let me know what you thought about The Barrel of Kojo. Did you like it? What did you like about it? Which aspects did you like or did you not like? Which parts do you think spoke to you? Like you felt like, ooh this movie is actually talking to me so anyway how you feel about it this is a safe zone okay I, I always strive to create a safe space for us to air our grievances my name is Ifa Labi please subscribe to my channel leave your comments down below make sure you're subscribed honestly make sure you're subscribed to my channel I mean why else would you be doing this 